Welcome to the next video in the evolution topic. This video will be looking at two dot points from the evolution of Australian biota syllabus 8.5.41, explain the importance of the study of past environments in predicting the impact of human activity in present environments, and 8.5.42, identify the ways in which paleontology assists understanding of the factors that may determine distribution of flora and fauna in present and future environments. So we'll start off with 8.5.41, explain the importance of the study of past environments in predicting the impact of human activity in present environments. So many of the things that have happened today have happened in the past. Aridity has shaped much of Australia's living biota. So too has the continent's northward drift into tropical latitudes. Australia was a cool, well-watered continent covered with rainforest, but as it is separated from Gondwana about 160 million years ago, it drifted north and began to dry out. This drying out has made it vulnerable to fire. Australia continues to move north and the climate continues to change. Climate change is occurring, perhaps at an unprecedented rate, and is commonly accepted to be by the hand of man. Some scientists predict a rise in temperature of between 1 to 5 degrees Celsius by 2070 on the southern Australian coast. So what is some evidence for climate change? Fossils dated between 50 and 100 million years old show that most of central Australia was once, co once covered in lush forests. Some of the common plants included the seed fern glossop terrace and the rainforest species of the Antarctic beach. This proves that at that time, much of Australia and much of Gondwana had a much wetter climate than today. When sea levels rose about 40 million years ago, parts of central Australia were covered by an inland sea. Animal fossils, including those of crocodiles, flamingos and tortoises, indicated an extensive water environment. As Gondwana split up and Australia moved north, the climate gradually became drier. The evidence is the appearance of, in the fossil record at about 25 million years ago of sclerophyll plants. We're looking a little bit more at sclerophyll plants as we move through the topic. So 8.5.42, identify the ways in which paleontology assists understanding of the factors that may determine distribution of flora and fauna in present and future environments. So how can paleontology help? Paleontology, as we've already looked at, is the study of fossils and provides information about plants and animals of the past, how they evolved and in some cases how they became extinct. Paleontology can give us pointers about modern plants and animals and allow us to make predictions about how they might evolve in the future and what factors might threaten them with extinction. For example, recent research on the fossil teeth of kangaroos gives some evidence that some of the modern living species seem to have become smaller over the past 30,000 years or so. One explanation is that the Aborigines tend to have taken, so tended to take the larger individuals when hunting thereby leaving more smaller individuals to breed the next generation. This selective hunting has acted just like natural selection, causing changes in these populations. So natural selection means that there has to be a variation in the population and the environment will choose which of those variations is more suited to the environment. All those others will die off and that selected or that favourable characteristic will then um, go on, reproduce and create more in the future. So what they're thinking is that this selective hunted, hunting sorry, has acted as the, um, that selecting factor in the environment and organisms that are outside of that um, particular trait that the Aboriginals are hunting for are able to survive and reproduce. So this helps us to predict the effects of human activities on the species. Paleontology has revealed how the flora and fauna of Australia changed in its relative abundance and its distribution as the continent underwent climate change over the past 50 million years. So as we know, abundance means how many and distribution means where they're found. So over the past 50 million years, as Australia has become drier and warmer, we've seen a great change in where these organisms are found and how many of them are found in each place. So for example, as the climate dried, the rainforest contracted to the mountains and the east coast and rainforest species such as the Antarctic beach declined from being a dominant species to near extinction. Meanwhile, the sclerophyll plants, which had previously been rare and insignificant, expanded their distribution to become the dominant flora of Australia. We now face a major global 
uh, sorry, a major climate change in the form of global warming. The knowledge gained from paleontology allows scientists to make predictions about the future changes to distribution of our modern plants and animals as climate change occurs. So as we can see, we've identified the ways in which paleontology has helped us to understand environments of the past and therefore make predictions about environments of the future. And we can use this to explain the importance of the study of paleontology because if we didn't have this understanding of the changes in the past, we wouldn't be able to make these predictions about where we're headed in the future. And that brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching.